Hey folks, how you doing? Don Grant, CTC, Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another exciting episode of In The Loop TV, sponsored by Harvey Performance Company. Thanks for joining me. Uh, before we get started, formalities, hit the like, hit subscribe. We got through it all, everything's great. Hey, listen, I want everybody out there to know I listen to the comments and I watch the comments. So uh, there was a comment on there that wanted to make sure that I got directly to the point on this episode. So um, here you go. Not funny. I'm sorry, I thought it was funny. So what are we gonna talk about on this episode? I just want to talk about high efficiency machining, high speed machining. What is high efficiency machining? These are the things dynamic milling, uh, adaptive clearing, profit milling, eye machining, trachoidal machining, all those things. We're gonna create a series that kind of explains what those things are, how they work, and just dive into it a little bit more. On this episode of In The Loop TV, high efficiency machining. Join me next. So hey folks, on this episode, we're talking about like a series of high efficiency machining. This is where we're running really fast, or at least we think we're running really fast. There's a lot of principles involved that take care of our cutting tool, so we are more productive at the spindle. It's called HEM, or sometimes HSM, a high efficiency machining or high speed machining. What I wanna do is break down an episode and talk about some of the things that is happening with the cutting tool and high efficiency machining that you might be able to apply a little bit better as you walk through your program. So if you're using dynamic milling, if you're using profit milling, if you're using eye machining, if you're doing some trachoidal machining, if you're using adaptive, all buzzwords, all buzzwords for the tool path that are involved in high efficiency machining. Let's dive into it. Let's find out what is making that path work and how our cutting tools love being applied in those paths. Okay, so we are gonna talk about something that's very important to high efficiency tool paths. And that is something called TEA. It's an acronym, don't worry about it. It's called Tool Engagement Angle tool engagement angle. There's an engagement of when the tool is in your material that is very important to a high efficiency tool path. Before we run in how that's controlled in a high efficiency tool path, we have to step back just a little bit to understand of what the negatives are of tool engagement angle in a standard tool path that's not using high efficiency. So folks, if we just look at a standard tool path, just a standard tool path, old school. Let's call it a pocket like this. We drop an end mill down in this pocket and we wanna remove as much material as possible. We drop it in, either we helical ramp it or we drill a hole to get into that pocket. Now we're trying to program this thing to take care of that cutting tool. That's what we're gonna do before we get into high efficiency. Now when this cutting tool drops down into this pocket and it starts making it first pass, what angle is on that tool. It's a slotting path. Slotting, anytime we're slotting with a cutting tool, it's 180 degrees of engagement, which is full slot. Now we run straight and we're taking care of the side of the cutting tool, which is fine, but once we wanna make another offset, we engage that cutter again in 180 degrees. That's a problem. And if you look at this standard tool path right here, every one of these red areas that you see in here is a situation the cutting tool doesn't like. Why does it not like it? Well, because it's a full slot and it's 180 degrees of engagement, TEA, tool engagement angle. So we need to look at this whole tool path and say to ourselves, we have to program for worst case scenario. What's worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is slotting. This whole tool path needs to be controlled by a slotting speeds and feeds, and we're gonna burn up our tool. We're not really taking care of it. 
That's what we need to understand before we jump into how tool engagement angle and these high efficiency tool paths are being taken care of. Following so far? So every time we take an end mill and we engage further on the radial step over, the more we have in a radial step over, the more angle of engagement we have on the tool. Take a look at this picture, okay? So that's causing issues with chip evacuation. It's causing issues with tool pressure, right? And it's causing issues with just not making that tool feel very good in that tool path. So the more we're stepping over, the more we have to be conscious of evacuating the chips, our flute count, all these other issues. As we step over less with our radial engagement, our angle, T-E-A, tool engagement angle, I'm gonna keep throwing that TEA, tool engagement angle, gets smaller. When we engage the tool very small in a little angle of engagement, we are in a better situation for that tool. We can control the pressures on the tool and we can make sure we can get the chips out. And if we can get the chips out, if we can get the chip, I'm just telling you, if we can get those chips out, guess what, we can add more flutes that's for another segment, but we can add more flutes, we can add more strength. So how do we control that angle of engagement? Toolpath. Toolpath controls it. That's what these softwares do. This is what HEM is. That's why you have to have a specific software that controls the angle of engagement. Let's think about this again. If we just run all little wobbly wobs, on an angle, as we do an inside arc, our angle of engagement gets greater, right? How many times have you ever used an end mill? You're running straight, it sounds fine. You get to a corner, it starts squealing. Why? Because the angle of engagement got greater. Then you start going straight again, you're doing fine, but then you get to an outside corner. Chip gets thinner. You can't control it. Chip gets thinner, the angle of engagement gets lighter. It's an inconsistent road that that tool is going to take and we have to control those forces. So a high efficiency tool path, something as a dynamic milling or something as an eye machining or adaptive tool path is gonna control, help that angle of engagement so we can use maximum flutes, we can evacuate the chips and we can put that tool in a really good situation. So when we control the angle of engagement, which the software is doing with our radial step over, it's also controlling the angle of engagement in the corners, in the entry, in the exit. It's doing that for us. This is a high efficiency tool path. Why is it high efficiency? Well, because that tool is gonna last a lot longer. That tool is gonna run a lot quicker. Your finish is gonna get a lot better. You're gonna put less pressure on the tool. You're gonna to be able to maximize your axials and your speeds and your MRR, material removal rate, and you're gonna be able to get your part done more efficiently than you would have if you're not using a high efficiency tool path. So, short video. What is angle of engagement? Angle of engagement in a high efficiency tool path is where we're controlling how much of that tool is engaged in our material versus an angle so we can maximize our flute count, so we can maximize our speed, so we can maximize our axial depth of cut, has everything to do with MRR, material removal rate, so we can maximize our dollars, that we're making in our shop and how fast we're getting things done. And this is what angle of engagement has to do with a high efficiency tool path. So folks, it was short. I just wanted to get into angle of engagement, explain what that is with a high efficiency tool path. We're going to dive into other things with other videos as quickly as I can spit these things out. Uh, that talks a little bit more about some of the things that help us use a high efficiency tool path to be most, what's the middle word? Efficient, efficient, efficient with our machining, with our tool path. But if you have any questions, please put them below. Stay tuned for the next episode. And before I go, um, three guarantees in life, folks. Death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.